The Canucks make a reassignment after one prospect's career best game, reaching a historic milestone in his journey. But the reasoning why is no cause for concern for Canucks fans. And speaking of no concerns, Elias Pettersson has been found and may have found the perfect line mates towards getting him back on track this season. We're going to be breaking down all of that in this episode of Canucks Digest, but first make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you don't miss any and all updates surrounding the Canucks as we head further into this season. With that, let's hop into the first topic today, which is Baines and Brandstrom assigned to Abby. So we see here from the Vancouver Canucks Twitter themselves saying general manager Patrick Alvin announced today that defenseman Eric Brandstrom and forward Archdeep Baines have been reassigned to Abbotsford now a lot of people are going to jump to this and be like why would they do this after Baines just had the career best game of his entire career but it's very well known that this is probably just going to be a cap move because they have to meet a certain quota or a certain cap per day and for Baines this could be a year-long endeavor he's currently exempt from waivers until he's completed three professional seasons he is currently in his third or has played 80 NHL season NHL games sorry and he's currently played 12 the same cannot be said for Branstrom who has logged a lot more games in a lot more years in the in and out of the NHL and in the AHL so the same rules don't really apply to him However, this is all just a move to make sure that the Canucks are just making sure that they're staying below the salary cap, making sure that their per day cost is not reaching the maximum. So this is just going to be a formality. We're probably going to see them get called up here and there throughout the season because Taka has praised these guys so much, especially Eric Branstrom as that puck moving defenseman. And of course, Archdeep Baines, who had a great game. But in other words, until Dakota Joshua returns to the lineup and presumably during any other length of player absences throughout the season, we can expect the Canucks to take advantage of their reassignments in order to occur more daily cap. Really, there's no reason not to. And the potential benefits of having more money to spend when the 2025 trade deadline rolls around speaks for themselves. But as far as Baines go, it is coming off of his first NHL goal. It was a big one for him. He had a big night last night. There was another player who had a big night last night that we're going to be talking about in a second, but definitely Baines was the one who stole the show. That's why this is coming out the day after he did that. It kind of brings to mind as to why it's happening. And then you see there with the implications, that is exactly why it is happening. But as far as his first NHL goal, Baines did have some things to say post game where he was saying, it all just happened so fast and all the guys were so happy. It was a special moment. Started in the D zone, just kind of got the puck on my stick, flat footed and sprung, made it an unreal rush on the play. I just went to the net and he was going towards it and he made a good play off the pad but put uh, and put it past the goalie. So he was being a bit humble on his goal. It was great reaction on his part. So he can't sell himself, his, himself short there on the quick reaction time to get that quick goal and what would eventually be the game-winning goal against the Pittsburgh Penguins. We had a very explosive second period. Archdeep was the cap on that period where we scored four goals to make a comeback after being down 2 nothing and to stomp back into the game with three goals in 65 seconds. Only the fourth team to ever do that in NHL history. And then a few minutes later, capping it off with another goal. And Baines's goal is more than just the result of a great breakout. It's the culmination of effort from one of the hardest working players the game has seen. Baines fought tooth and nail as an undrafted overage junior to get a chance at the NHL. And now he's just the fourth player of Punjabi descent to score an NHL goal. And best of all, he got to do it for his child home team in front of his home crowd who gave him a standing ovation in return. I know Surrey was definitely exploding. I could almost hear the fans from Wynn all the way over in Surrey, BC, where the hometown kid got to represent his hometown and his childhood team. And speaking on that timeout where there was the ovation, it was a timeout. Everyone came over, gave me a hug on the team. We saw it with JC Miller in the intro video. It's something I won't forget. It's been a journey. There's a lot you've got to learn and you've got to learn quickly. The guys above me and the staff helped me believe in me. It just felt like a step closer tonight when he's speaking on his teammates and his NHL journey. He's definitely earned what he's gotten in this league. He's definitely offered now a spot where I think he's going to be finding himself on this Canucks roster almost permanently if it rolls around in next season. I think there's going to be some contracts that expire as well that Vancouver is going to have to address with our Steve Baines being potentially the part of the future that Vancouver wants to have in mind. I think this last night went a great way of him just making a case as to where, why we're going to see a lot more of him this season than we saw last year. 
And I think we're going to see a lot more production out of him from last year going into this year after the great season he had in Abbotsford. He's going to have some great playing experience down there with Manny Moholter, who was also on that list of Punjabi descent players who have to have scored a goal in the NHL. So he's in great company. He's got great development there, and he's going to be jumping into this Vancouver Canucks roster permanently, probably within the next season or two, probably within the next season, more likely, especially after last night, if he can continue this. But what did you guys think of Baines's game last night? What do you guys think about the reassignment? Obviously, it's probably just a cat move, but how many games do you think we're going to see out of Brandstrom and Archdeep Baines this season? Would love to hear what you guys have to say down in the comments down below, but that's going to take us into the second topic of the day, which is PD has been found. So we see here after being missing for quite a few games, Elias Pettersson has been found after scoring his first game of the season last night. He finally got in the goal column after a few assists. And he did credit a lot of that to his linemates saying, we're growing every game. They're really good around the corners to work the puck low. And I'm trying to find the open ice in the middle, like the goal today. And when speaking of his linemates, they are probably one of the best lines we have on this team. This lineup that we had last night, I thought was a really great lineup. And it was one that I think is something that Vancouver should roll with going forward. I think in that defensive pairing in the second pair, that's obviously something that needs to be fixed because they have a very, very poor plus minus rating this season and have been on the ice for a lot of bad things that have happened. But we're going to be praising that second line mainly, first of all, because Elias Pettersson, Connor Garland, Niels Hoaglander, they have been a great trio. They've been working well off each other. They've had great chemistry. They've been working really well as far as getting production, getting pucks deep, and just giving this team the spark that they need, like Elias Pettersson did. It could not have come at a perfect time for Elias Pettersson with all the noise that he was dealing with this week, with all the noise that he was dealing with carrying over from last season, all the stuff that's been in the media for the past few days, and he scored a goal in old school PD fashion, just ringing it off the post, keeping his feet moving, being in the right place at the right time, and just rifling it home. It was amazing to see. I was just jumping on my feet because so, so happy for him that he finally got the goal that we were waiting for him to get. And as well, Kiefer Sherwood. We cannot praise him enough. I know we talk about him a lot this season. We've been talking about him almost after every single post-game video or just in general. And he's earned it. He has one of been, been one of the best players on this team to start the season, along with Connor Garland as well, where he has just been a wrecking ball. This is why we brought him over from Nashville, and he's done nothing short of exceed expectations. And then that fourth line, where uh, Suter, Baines, and Sprong, those guys also did a lot of great things as well tonight, or last night, sorry. They had a really solid game. All four lines played really well. And the thing that really makes it all the more crazier is that all four goals came from all four lines to have a great comeback after being down two nothing. I know after that first period, I was getting really worried as far as being down in the hole. And I know that Vancouver can rattle off goals fast, but after being down two nothing against a team that has Sidney Crosby and a Guinea Malkin on there, it's going to be tough to climb back from some of those things, but they were able to, and they just did it in true Canucks fashion where Rifled off three goals in 65 seconds to gain the lead. And then R.S.D. Baines with that extra go-ahead goal that would be the ultimate game winner. That was Vancouver Canucks hockey. That's what we're used to. And then they played shutdown hockey in that third period where Pittsburgh could not get anything going except for that fluke Malkin goal where Lankin got just outworked because it was just one-on-one. -on -one. That's something that Vancouver is going to have to shore up to make sure that they don't have that be a continuing issue. But again, lankanen has been playing really solid. He's been just rolling. He kind of has really stolen that job from Archer Shilovs. So really, there hasn't been too much of a goalie competition to speak of because Lankanen has just been the hot hand and, and Vancouver just continues to roll with him. But what do you guys think down in the comments? What do you guys think about these lines? Do you think Elias Pettersson and uh, Connor Garland and Niels Hoaglander are the trio that is key to making PD successful? We'd love to hear what you guys have to say down in the comments, but that's going to take us into our final topic of the day, which is comment of the day. Let me see here from Sean Paquette saying that PD just needs to go out and play hockey, period. Shut out everything. Just get back to what made him successful. And we saw that last night on Saturday against the Penguins. It was a good old-fashioned PD game. I think that's something where we saw a smile on his face. He was in good spirits after the game. Obviously, they got the win. He got the goal. The noise was very quiet as far as what was leading into the game. And now he has a clearer head. And I think now we are going to see the PD that we know and love. We're getting back to that old-school Elias Pettersson hockey. 
and it's going to be awesome to watch throughout the rest of the season. But that's going to do it for this episode of Canucks Digest. Whatever you guys think down, let it down in the comments. Let us know. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of the notifications as we head into our next game and hopefully continue this win streak. But that's going to do it for today's episode. I've been your host, Griffin. Take care.